Well, as a result of a five eyewitness news investigation, the military has ordered an immediate change to the way the remains of service members killed on active duty are tracked. Not just those killed in action in Iraq or Afghanistan, but for every death of a U.S. soldier, sailor, airman, or Marine worldwide. Mark Albert has led our investigation into the death of a Minnesota sailor, now getting results for other families. Dave Cedergren's tour in Iraq was almost over. The 25-year-old Navy medic from South St. Paul was due to be back in Minnesota in less than a month. During one of their last weeks on patrol, his platoon of Marines stopped at Camp Escandaria. They wanted to regroup, rest, and take a shower. The first thing that I noticed was an arm um, sticking out of one of these showers. Tony Stevens is the Marine who found Cedargren on September 11, 2004, and gave him CPR. It didn't work. Dave was likely already gone. My number one thing was, could this be an electrocution? And it turned out it was. Cedargren had been electrocuted by a haphazard electrical system that had burned, injured, and shot Marines in those very showers. But no one told any of that to Dave Cedargren's family, not for four years. I don't think the military realizes what we have gone through as a family. We've gone through hell. There's absolutely no excuse. The woman in charge of all criminal investigations of U.S. sailors and Marines across the globe is doing something she's never done publicly before. Susan Razor is admitting her agency, the Naval Criminal Investigative Service, popularly known as NCIS, broke its own policies in a death investigation. In retrospect, everybody could have um, done things different. In fact, lots of things went wrong in Dave Cedargren's case right from the beginning. Fire! Razor says surging violence in central Iraq kept her investigator from getting to Camp Iskandaria for two days after Dave Cedargren died. Then the NCIS investigator failed to share what he learned about the electrical hazards at the base with the agency in charge of actually determining what killed David Cedargren, the Armed Forces Medical Examiner. Um, we do have policy in place that states that the agent should communicate all the information from the death scene to the medical examiner. Um, were those policies in place? The, absolutely, those policies time? were in place. So and someone didn't follow the policy? That's correct. And has there been any discipline for that person? No, there hasn't. Why not? Well, again, um, given the circumstances um, you know, that were... It, the, the operational tempo was just such that I don't think that there was one person um, that could be held accountable for it. I mean, it was just an unfortunate um, series of events, the case being um, you know, reassigned to another agent and so forth and so on, and, and the pieces just weren't all put together. Without those pieces, the Armed Forces Medical Examiner told the Cedargren family Dave's death was due solely to natural causes, specifically inflammation of the heart muscle. But that wasn't the only danger that day for Dave Cedargren. When he stepped into the base shower, the energetic athletic corpsman was struck by a surging jolt of uncontrolled electricity, strong enough to kill, the Marines later discovered. But the NCIS investigator at the base failed to tell the medical examiner about the widespread electrical problems, and the case was closed. Does your agency owe the Cedargren family an apology? I think that we um, owe the Cedargren family an apology for any pain that we caused as a result of um, what occurred during the investigation. You're saying you're sorry? Yes, I absolutely am sorry. Do you accept her apology? No, I do not. You don't accept her apology? No. Because I don't think she would have attempted to apologize if you hadn't asked her. I feel grateful for her apology, but it's something that's a little too late. And I first heard about it. At least NCIS would answer all of our questions. The Armed Forces Medical Examiner, though, has been far less forthcoming about how it missed electrocution as part of the cause of death, how it overlooked Dave's electrical burns, why the chief medical examiner, Captain Craig Malik, did not initially call the family or apologize, and why it still won't answer all of the Cedargren family's questions. In fact, the family only got Dave's new autopsy and death certificate after we started asking why they didn't have it. This is the Rockville, Maryland headquarters of the Armed Forces Medical Examiner. We tried for two months to get an on-camera interview with the chief medical examiner or the director. Both refused. 
their latest reason? They have an intense meeting schedule to get ready to move into new office space. Clearly, somebody's priorities are screwed up. If, if there's more concern about moving into a new office than, than uh, correcting a, a major mistake that their office made. Well, These are Dave Cedergren's two brothers. Don't know it. It's almost like starting the funeral over again. You never know for sure if this is the final report. Since our investigation first aired in May, Captain Malik has apologized to the Cedergren family in this letter for the delay in notifying them of the amended cause of death and for providing them the autopsy two years late. As a result of our stories, the medical examiner says it has made these changes. Now, when the agency makes a change to a service member's autopsy or cause of death, an automatic email will alert Captain Malik and his chief deputy to notify the family promptly and offer copies of the updated files. Dave Cedergren's family wonders why that was not in place a long time ago. I can't find the words to express how disappointed I am more than anything else. It took us to come to you to get things to really happen. Any of you here uh, not confident that they're going to take steps to make sure all the other families are told? I'm not confident. I'm not. No. Well, if, if anything that we've experienced is an indication of how competent they are and how well that they can do their job outside of intense meetings about office space moving, I'm not at all confident. Instructors at the NCIS Training Academy now use the Cedargren case to teach agents why it's so important to share information gathered in the field. One question, though, still haunts the Cedargren family. With all the warnings about electrical problems at the base where Dave died, why weren't they fixed? The answer we got angered the Cedargren family and may frustrate you as well. Our investigation continues tomorrow night at 10. All right, Mark, thanks so much. And the story doesn't stop here. We have extensive coverage on our website. You can read some of the key documents in this case or watch our first two reports from May along with extended interviews. You can find it all at kstp.com.